Welcome back. You're watching DD India News. I'm Gautam Roy. Now, as a date for the US presidential election nears, just two weeks away now, the campaigning for the elections has heated up. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump remain in a tight contest across seven battleground states with just over two weeks until the 5th of November US presidential clash, according to an opinion poll done by a US daily. Democratic former prosecutor Harris led among key likely voters in Georgia 51% to 47%, while Republican Trump was slightly ahead in Arizona with 49 to 46%. Both findings fall Minnesota, within the plus or minus four and a half percentage Luke. points margin of error in the poll, which surveyed 5,016 registered voters from the 30th of September to the 15th of this month. Harris, who became the party's candidate after President Joe Biden stepped aside in July, also had an edge in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin, three states where she will campaign later on Monday, that is today, tonight, with Republican former U.S. President uh, Representative Liz Cheney. And Donald Trump has led in North Carolina and was tied with Harris in Nevada, 48 to 48%. According to this uh, Washington Post poll, the former president will hold a rally in North Carolina later on Monday after surveying recent damage from Hurricane Helene. Monday's findings from the Post and George Mason University's Shah School of Policy and Government echoed other recent polls that found a neck-and-neck -neck race in the seven battleground states ahead of Election Day, he was even as Harris holds an edge nationwide. This is also according to some other surveys. Overall, 49% of likely voters said they support Harris and 48% backed Trump. Among registered voters, Reuters Ipsos polling last week found Harris holding a steady margin, 45 to 42% lead over Donald Trump. And on that cliffhanger note, let's take you across live now to my colleague Shubhendu Ghosh joining us from New Jersey in the US to get an overview of how the situation is developing in this presidential race just two weeks away from polling. Now, hi Shubhendu, the latest Washington Post poll suggests it's almost a dead heat across the swing states between Harris and Trump with just about a fortnight left to reach the finish line in the race to the White House. Now what efforts are both of them making to ensure that things swing their way? Uh, absolutely, uh, Gautam. The last figure that you mentioned about the voter percentage, uh, 48 uh, to uh, 49 uh, between Donald Trump and uh, Kamala Harris, uh, that really speaks volumes about a cracker of a contest that this presidential election is turning out to be. And the most of the actions is going, are going to be uh, centered uh, around the seven swing states uh, of uh, United States of America. And those are the priority for the candidates as the final few days of campaigning uh, before the big election day on November 5th. Uh, as we speak, uh, Kamala Harris, vice president, is headed to uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Uh, for the large stretch effort in the swing states to push for agenda. Uh, Pennsylvania is a key swing state, 19 uh, electoral uh, uh, votes to be uh, uh, garnered and taken there. It has been uh, broadly a bluish uh, state, although it's swing, uh, but uh, if you look at the local elections, the local legislative bodies, we see elements of uh, red as well, and they, they say when red and blue come together, it sort of turns purple, and that makes it a very exciting uh, uh, state uh, as far as the swing state concept in elections is concerned. Uh, Donald Trump is headed to North uh, Carolina. Uh, that's uh, one of the states uh, which suffered uh, the worst impacts of uh, Cyclone Helene. And the voters there have been talking about uh, that their priority, other than any other issue, uh, would be who is the leader who is going to make sure that uh, the reconstruction work of their community can be taken up on priority. That's where uh, Donald Trump is uh, uh, putting his weight. He's had an edge in North Carolina earlier. So in these last days, we see even within swing states, the leaders are aiming to uh, do their best uh, to garner support from uh, the states where they have a slight edge over the other. But it is a neck-to-neck -neck contest, Gotham, as we speak. And, and what's the situation in uh, New Jersey where you are right now, Shubhendu? Because it has a significant chunk of Indian diaspora voters. How are they leading in these elections? 
Yes, Gautam, uh, we are in uh, New Jersey, just uh, in a uh, city to New York. And if you look at New York and New Jersey together, there's some 400,000 Indian American uh, voters, uh, Indian Americans who are, who are based here. Their votes uh, become hugely important. But Indian Americans as a community could not have imagined an election like this, where both sides, on, on one side uh, you have Vice President Kamala Harris and her Indian roots. On the other side, uh, there is a very popular uh, Donald Trump, his vice presidential candidate, uh, his wife, uh, Usha, uh, and her Indian roots. So in that sense, uh, there is almost like a disproportionate attention and interest uh, on the Indian uh, American community. They uh, form about 1% of America's population, but their significance and the contribution that they do to the society in their mm. uh, professional work and also uh, this Are both over, the sides making uh, any special kind of efforts to uh, woo them as well? Contexts. Are both the sides making special efforts to woo them as well? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Both sides say that they are the best candidate to take forward uh, their concerns and agenda. So uh, they're also really now spoiled for choice uh, this time over Indian American community. Uh, and therefore, their priorities are also finding uh, a great voice uh, in the campaigns by both the sides. Both sides think that uh, the Indian American votes will come out uh, in large numbers for their support. But uh, again, uh, when we speak to them, uh, this percentage that we've been talking about, like this 50-50 contest between uh, uh, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, Trump, we also see reflected uh, amongst the members of the Indian community, uh, but uh, politically hugely significant their voice in these elections. And what that number, Shubhendu 49 for Harris and 48 for Trump has done is that made uh, the campaigning by both the sides very contentious as well. And both uh, the candidates have been attacking each other over issues related to their cognitive uh, capabilities or competence. Now, how concerned are Americans about this fast emerging issue? And can we, just before the election, see some tests taking place as well? Well, uh, when we say that it is one of the most polarizing elections in U.S. history, the reason also being that uh, from foreign affairs, global conflicts, climate change, uh, to really uh, cognitive health of uh, uh, the candidates are in uh, focus, and this has been there for uh, for, for the beginning of the year. Uh, and age not uh, without is a reason. funny concept because the older candidates, but not without reason, most certainly. Uh, and therefore, we also saw, in fact, uh, earlier President uh, Joe Biden stepping down uh, from the contest uh, primarily because of his uh, health concerns. And uh, the interesting part is that. The advantage that Donald Trump seems to have got at that point in time uh, seems to be turning into some sort of a disadvantage because now he's <laughs> older of the two. He's yeah. 78. And uh, if he wins and he uh, completes his term, if we assume that he's going to be 82, he's already the oldest uh, uh, American uh, presidential candidate in that sense. So now Kamala Harris is using the same ammunition that Donald Trump used against uh, uh, Joe Biden. So although there are issues of immediate interest for the voters, as I mentioned, uh, somebody affected by cyclone, job, security and other issues, but uh, on the back of their mind, there is a lingering concern uh, whether the candidate of their choice is uh, physically and mentally fit to lead. All right. Uh, well, let's see if uh, this concern uh, then uh, develops into something that the candidates themselves feel the need to address in, uh, uh, with a sense of finality. Thanks a lot for joining us for the moment. Shubhendu Ghosh. Now, intense border fighting continues between Israel and Hezbollah. 